Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing something very special today. Uh, Jenny Lewin has brought out a brand new book called Anime Doodle Fantasy Characters and we're going to have a look at it today. So I'm going to do a bit of a flip through here. You can have a look at some of the images while I'm having a quick chat to you. So Jenny asked me to do a little bit of a colour along but because I um, have a lot of stuff going on close to Christmas and things like that, I decided just to do some video uh, tutorials for you. I am going to put a lot of in-depth uh, in detail in there for everyone. Now I normally wouldn't do this for a public video but because I love you guys so much I have decided to do that this time around. So I'm also going to put up some colour charts and lists and I'm going to try and do uh, the colours up on the screen as well so I'll hopefully get that done for you as well. So hopefully you guys really enjoy um, this colour along. I'm going to be doing that particular image right now on the screen for you today so I'm really looking forward to having a go at that. So guys I'm going to uh, let you guys watch the rest of this and then we'll get started on the skin.
So guys, this is the image that I decided to do. I printed it on just some normal drawing paper that I usually print my images onto. It is not an expensive paper. Uh, it's just uh, something that I can pick up here in Australia at Officeworks quite cheap. So that's what I'm actually using here. I'm going to use Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils today. You could use any pencils that you like. Um, just uh, basically go for a similar tones make sure you've got a highlight a mid-tone and a shadow color and that's everything that you really need to know let's get started on that skin so guys I'm going to start with uh, some sanguine here I'm going to go in and mark out all of my shadow lines so I am going to be doing two different colors for each of the images uh, I'm doing the male as the cool colors uh, sorry warm colors and then I'm doing the uh, mermaid underneath in cool colors because she's under the water um, also too I thought being a dragon you know I think that's what he is anyway <laughs> um, so what I'm doing now is I'm actually putting really really light pressure down uh, I don't want to indent the paper at all because I will not be able to blend over the top of it if I push down that paper. Um, I'm just marking in any features that I might want to put in there. So this is where you would accentuate cheekbones, um, also put in finger lines, uh, things like that you could do with this darker color on this light pressure. So I'm going to do this on all of the shadow areas. Also on the arms, I'm going to do some muscles. So I'm going to bring that color in to make a more of a moon shape there just so that it looks more defined and you can see that there's a muscle there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fill these areas out. So I'm going to put it everywhere where there is something sitting on the skin. So we always um, have a cast shadow. So I'm just going to put them in where I think that they would fall. I just want you to know with stuff like that, I don't want you to stress too much about where a cast shadow goes. Um, if you just see something that's sitting against the skin, then just put a shadow on one side or both sides, depending on uh, where you are thinking that the light might be coming from so you always put the shadow on the opposite side so for example when I come down to the mermaid later on uh, I'll just sort of show you a little bit of of light um, coming down from the top of the water through so what would be dark underneath her and things like that so um, anyway I'm coming in I've just put a piece of paper there as well I just want to let you know that that um, my printer ink was smudging out on my hand and I didn't want to smudge the rest of the uh, image so I've just put a piece of paper on there to protect the image as well as my skin because I was getting a black hand. So anyway I'm coming in now over the top of the um, sanguine color I've got cinnamon here and I'm just coming in and doing exactly the same thing so we're not putting any pressure on we don't want to put any indentations in this paper we just want to put in the color so what I'm going to try and do is uh, layer the pigment now when we say pigment that means the color inside the pencil so the lead part um, it, it holds the color which is the pigment so what I'm actually trying to do is lay some of this oil down um, and then we're going to use another layer to sort of I guess blend that out and make it nice and smooth and creamy. So I'm really happy for Jenny for bringing out a new book. Um, she's a beautiful artist and a lovely lovely person and I'm so glad to be able to help her out on um, the launch of her new book. So guys um, if you haven't uh, got it already I probably should have explained that at the start because you are doing a color along here. <laughs> um, all of the links and details will be through the event. So um, after the event is done, I'm going to release uh, these videos to YouTube public. So to start with, they'll be unlisted for you guys on the weekend, and then I'm going to release it uh, later on for everybody else. So guys, um, I'm coming in now, I'm using some uh, medium flesh, and I'm coming over the top of all of those colors again, and just sort of blending this a little bit further out. You'll notice that I'm le leaving some little areas there. I've still got a uh, light flesh and I'm going to put some more um, I'm pretty sure I've got some yellow or cream to come through over the top of that again so we want to make sure that we're leaving some highlight areas so that um, it looks like there's shade and and or, or sorry depth and um, and color through the whole skin because when you have a look at yourself in the mirror uh, we don't actually look all one color uh, um, depending on where the lights coming from we might have 
like almost black colors through the skin uh, we would have light and shadows as well so that's what we're trying to create here now obviously we're just doing a coloring in so it's not going to look completely realistic but I guess the idea is to make things look a little bit more 3d and um, give them a little bit more depth and uh, hopefully this will help you in your normal coloring as well so if you don't end up doing this image um, hopefully it will help you with other images in the future so I'm coming in now with some light flesh and I'm going to go over the top of all of that color again so I'm still doing really light pressure I don't know if you can tell uh, the video looks quite smooth anyway but there is no indentations I haven't uh, pushed down the paper in any spots um, there's just a darker sections and lighter sections so when we come over with the second layer we're going to really deepen those things up and uh, get some nice color coming through so I'm going to come over now with the light flesh and I'm just going in and basically covering over the rest of the sections that are left so I said we had some highlight sections there so we're just going to come over all of that now and gently go over the darker colors as well so I'm going to bring another tone over the top of it I'm not sure if I'm going to use white yet or cream um, but I'm going to come back over that later on so we're going to do this color now so you should have some nice smooth um, color but you'll still be able to see uh, little flecks of white paper through the color because we haven't put any pressure on it yet so you should still be able to see um, some bumpiness and it would look still a little bit more rough so I'm going to finish this color off now okay so now I'm going to go over the top of that again uh, with a really highlight color so I wanted to put a little bit more yellow through it so I did decide to go with the cream uh, it's got more yellow in it uh, if I was using say Prismacolors I would have probably used maybe eggshell or something like that so but I'm just coming in over the top and I'm just doing light pressure all over so we're putting that over the top of all of the color just to bring in a little bit of yellow tone to it and it's sort of a going to give us a nice basis to put our second layer on and we'll be able to put some more pressure on there and get that second layer done so we're just going to finish off the skin for him and then we'll move on to the next section after that so I didn't want to do too much in each video uh, I'm going to try to not make too many of course but um, I just figured that with the flip through and the skin part it's going to be over 25 minutes long anyway uh, so I will just finish up after this skin bit and we'll go on to the next video there so um, guys if you have any questions uh, please don't hesitate to ask you can ask in the event or you can ask in the uh, comments on here and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can um, I don't uh, want you guys to stress about not having the right colors or anything like that just use what you've got guys um, you know we can only do what we can do if that makes any sense at all to anyone um, don't sort of think that you have to have all of these colors and you have to have um, this particular brand uh, I don't want you guys to ever think that if you've got a particular type of pencils that you like using then that's fine um, this hopefully will help you to uh, pick similar colors um, by what I'm actually using so you can sort of see that the first color that I used which I'm doing a second layer of now um, was sanguine sanguine's like a orange brown color um, so then I've moved on to cinnamon which is really like a pinky brown color and then I've moved on to pink which is like the medium flesh which is quite kind of like a dark pink and then um, light flesh which is a really light peach color and then I've used cream which is a yellowy creamy color so if you've got uh, pencils that are uh, not this brand or of a different sort that's fine try to pick sort of similar type colors in that selection and you should get a, a similar look so those colors together if I was to use say watercolors or markers or something they're going to give us a similar um, I guess effect as what we're getting now so please don't stress about that I really want you guys to just have fun and enjoy it and learn something new while you're at it 
So I'm using Sanguine again now uh, to go over with our second layer. So what I'm actually doing is I am putting a little bit more pressure now closer to the edges of each of these sections. And as I come a little bit further out uh, towards wherever my highlight is, I am releasing that pressure so that the next color will blend nicely over the top of that. Um, without any real defined lines and things like that. So I am putting in pressure now. We want to cover uh, by the end of the last layer of color that we put on, we want to make sure that there's no um, white showing through the paper. So we'll want to burnish that down. Um, burnish means to flatten the tooth of the paper. So it, all paper has a tooth on it. It's like dips and valleys uh, on the paper. So you can get rough paper, which has got real big dips and valleys, or you'll get... Um, smoother paper which might not have any or hardly any at all or they're a lot smaller so there's lots of different types of paper so this particular paper we want to sort of push down all of that tooth so that the color looks nice and smooth and even together so I'm coming over all of that now with the cinnamon and I'm just doing exactly the same thing so I'm going to put firmer pressure over the color I've already done and just sort of loosen or lighten the grip or the I guess the pressure of that pencil as I come further out. So I don't want to have any real defined lines between the colors. So to do that, I'm trying to sort of release that pressure at the end uh, so that there's not as much, so I can sort of cover up the rest of the tooth with the next color so that it looks like it's actually blended together. So I hope that makes uh, a bit of sense for you. Um, we don't want to go in and burnish anything too soon because it, we will find it hard to go over once it's been pushed down so once you push down the tooth of the paper some pencils you cannot go any further um, sometimes you don't even have to push the tooth of, of down on the paper it's the pencils that don't layer over the top of each other anyway but um i just want you to know that if you're getting um grainy look or you're having trouble getting a color over the top it could be that that we may have put too much pressure on that uh, previous layer and we've already covered up the tooth of the paper and these whatever pencils that you're using may not be able to go any further over that. There are lots of different brands that still do that. Oil-based pencils, uh, which is Faber-Castell, or these Polychromos are oil-based, um, they're actually quite good. Um, Wax-based pencils, you can get a lot more layers on, um, but there's lots more sort of to go into that and I don't want to do that right now but um, there are lots of different types of pencils is what I'm trying to say so please don't stress if you can't get it to look exactly right it does take practice and also learning your particular pencil type as well so now I've done that color I'm coming in with that uh, medium flesh and I'm putting in a little bit more pressure so you can see that it's really starting to build up and we can really see some definition like especially in the arm there around the nose um, and things like that so you can see why why um, it's starting to look more 3d because we're going from darker to lighter the lighter areas look closer to us and the darker colors look further away which makes it look uh, in essence like a 3d picture so that's what we're trying to create here um, and the more that as I said the more you practice uh, the better that you'll get at that and you'll start to sort of see pictures you'll see uh, you'll be looking at someone and you'll see that you know they've got shadows on one side because the sunlight's on the left side of them or whatever um, and you'll start to see that and when you start to color you'll start to imagine that in your coloring as well so you really are learning something here even though I as I said I don't want to go into it too much depth and I don't want to confuse you all you're still going to be learning by just watching what I'm doing here and also by practicing yourselves So I'm going to bring in the next lightest color, which was that light peach, and I'm going to come over. Uh, so what I'm trying to do now is really make sure that those darker areas are flattened off. And I'm just doing a medium kind of pressure out towards the middle section because I still want to put the last layer on. So I'm going over the highlighted sections, but not putting any pressure on that middle part there yet. I'm going to wait until I bring the next color in before I get that pressure going. Um, but you can really see how smooth it's starting to look and how uh, creamy and things like that that are starting to look because of how we've actually blended that through. Now, I've done two layers, but 
I have actually been able to do a picture without doing two layers of skin but you need to be really careful because there's no room for error if you go straight in and start with that second layer without doing your first one. So I always try to do a first layer just to make sure I've got everything out where I want it to go um, and then I'll come over and burnish it with that second layer. So I've got the cream here now and I'm coming in over the top of everything else. I'm still kind of doing a little bit of lighter pressure uh, towards the middle there and I think if you wanted to come over now with a white you can if you're happy with the color that's come out now um, you don't have to I've just gone out the lines there so I've just rubbed that off there because the sky is actually going to be blue I've decided to put some white over because I really like this white. It's a Caran d'Ache Luminance pencil, white pencil. It's really soft, creamy, um, and it seems to go over really well over the top of this these pencils. It also goes over really well over the top of Prismacolors as well. Um, so I'm not sure what it's like with a lot of other pencils, but um, I really, really love it. It smooths everything off completely. So it does change the color of the skin. So just to let you know that, it does lighten it off. So you can see where around the face and the arms where it's actually quite dark um, this white will actually darken it off uh, lighten it off sorry so I usually start in the highlight areas and I bring it out towards the um, darker areas because I don't want to smudge too much of the darker color back into that highlight so that's sort of how I do it I've got a brush there to brush off any dust from this because I will get some dust um, or wax uh, dust off that pencil because it is sort of lifting up some of that color as well because it's sort of mixing it through and laying down so just to let you know you don't have to do this layer as I said I decided to do it but um, you don't have to do that you could come over what after the cream you could come over with a blending pencil um, I actually going to use a Caran d'Ache one in here um, which is a Caran d'Ache blending stick, uh, which I absolutely love. And what it actually does is, it, it, to me, it kind of sets the the pencil. So it goes over the top of the pencil and it, it kind of sets it so that when you put your hand over it or something like that, it's nice and smooth and it doesn't um, actually lift up that pencil again. So it's like, a, I guess, a sealant over the top of the color that you've done. So you could use something like that. Uh, you don't have to use the finishing effects that I am is what I'm trying to say so um, at the moment I'm using that luminance pencil and I'm just coming over all of the skin starting in the highlighted areas and bringing that out over to the shadow areas as well so you can see now that I've done that you've got less definition less shadow and things like that um, you could come back in because this pencil is really awesome you could come back in and put a layer of dark back over into the shadow areas if you wanted to deepen them up a bit more as well so I guess I've given you a lot of options. Um, you don't have to, as I said, follow what I'm actually doing or you can exactly follow what I'm doing. That's fine as well. If you're not wanting to come over the whole area with the white, um, I would maybe do just the very, very highlighted sections with a little bit of white just to really give that contrast between the light and the dark because it will help with that as well. Okay, so I've just got the nails there to do. I'm going to use some of that dark flesh, uh, which you can't really see there on the screen, but I'm telling you now it's dark flesh. I'm just coming into the nails and just putting a little bit of that color in just to show some color. And I'm also putting a little bit on the lips here as well, um, just to fill in some color on those lips. And I've got the light flesh there and I'm just blending that out. So I didn't want that too light um, because we want it to be different to the rest of his skin at least. So guys, um, I think we've finished most of the skin here now. I'm just going to uh, quickly do the eyes as well um, just to get them out of the way and then we can start on the clothing and the wings and things like that. So I've just used some uh, Cool Grey 3 and just uh, blended that or put that in around the outside of the eye there to have shadow from his um, eyelids and things like that. And I'm going to blend that out with the uh, Cool Grey one and just uh, blend that off a little bit put a little bit of white uh, if I need to to make sure that's blended off nice and smooth I'm going to use a tiny little bit of purple in his eyes um, I'm not going to put a lot of detail or make them really uh, dark because I just quite liked having the little purple 
sections at the top of each of those eyelids there. I've gone over the, uh, f sorry, the fingernails and the mouth there with a little bit of white just to blend that off a little bit as well. Okay, so I've got my purple here. I'm using crimson, uh, uh, which is a really nice sort of deep purpley pink color and all I've done is just blend that out with some white now you can pick any color you want here um, it's up to you I've just got a black pencil here and I'm just coming in and filling out the pupil I'm actually going to come back in later on and go over that with a uh, a texture like fine liner just to uh, deepen up the areas and I also want to accentuate those lashes and the lids and things like that as well but I'll do that near the end uh, so that I've got um, you know that'll be the final touches of it I guess I have put in a little bit of white gel pen but I did have trouble with the white gel pen on the polychromos pencils so I end up using some white uh, opaque watercolor paint so gouache gouache whatever you call it also you could use um, some watercolor ink anything like that that will be opaque and sit on top of that pencil so that's everything today uh, oh sorry that's everything for this video but obviously today I'm going to bring out a couple of more I just wanted to thank you guys and look forward to seeing you for the next one thanks guys mm -hmm.